Cat Productions. This is the story of the final time Lane Staley would record music with his band, Alice in Chains. Chains would release what would be their final studio album, Made with Lane, in 1995, and would go on to release their Unplugged record in 96. And although they never officially disbanded, Chains went on hiatus after that Unplugged record. So much so that Jerry Cantrell decided to release a solo record in 1998. There were rumors of Staley's failing health, especially after the death of his former fiance, Demry Parrott, who passed away in October of 1996, around six months after the band had performed their Unplugged show. People who knew Lane said the death of Demry affected him really badly. And after that, he just clearly was not the same. However, Lane would get back into the studio with Alice in Chains one last time. Clear all your sins, get born again, just repeat a couple lines. It was in August of 1998. Staley went into the studio and recorded two songs with Alice in Chains, and those two songs were Get Born Again and Died with Died being dedicated to his former fiance, Demry. Both songs would be included on Alice in Chains' 1999 release, Music Bank. Uh, tell us about the new song, uh, Get Born Again. Uh, when was this written? Uh, where recorded? Uh, give us some background information on this. Who wants to we were that? down at, uh, we were, we were uh, working with uh, Dave Jordan, and uh, we were at his studio in El Dorado, and we kind of just kind of got together and, ma and made it up on the spot, which is what we generally do a lot of times. Uh, because, you know, we don't rehearse or anything. Because we don't know what we're doing. <laughs> uh, we, okay, got to do a record, write a song, and... Uh, <laughs> I mean that's how Jar of Flies was. That's uh, we 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 had nothing in that, and we went in and wrote and recorded that in seven days, and that's some of the best stuff we ever did. And both of these songs, "Get Born Again" and uh, uh, "Died," died, died are, are 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 very cool. You know, they're very fun, and uh, it was uh, it was cool making them up. In August of 1998, producer Dave Jordan and engineer Brian Colstrom were working on the Offspring's Americana album at Jordan's El Dorado studio. Because The Offspring had booked studio time and had all their gear set up, the only time Alice in Chains could come in was the weekend of August 22nd and the 23rd. The Offspring agreed to let Alice in Chains use the studio. Expectations were high, as this was the first time the band would be working with Jordan since Facelift and Dirt. August 22nd also happened to be Lane's 31st birthday so it was arranged to get a cake with candles for Lane. There was a sense of excitement before Lane arrived. Accounts vary as to the exact time he got there, but it was late, possibly as late as 3 a.m., according to Jordan. When he finally arrived, the change in his physical appearance was striking, even from his final live performances just two years earlier. He had grown his hair down past his shoulders, he was wearing a white cap and eyeglasses. He was wearing a blue Dallas Cowboys jacket, and he also had on a necklace or a chain that had what appeared to be a pipe hanging from the end, and he was also carrying a black leather satchel. Lane showed up at the studio, and I didn't recognize him. He looked like an 80-year-old man. He didn't have any teeth. I was shocked, to say the least, Colstrom recalled. Others said they could still see parts of Lane there and that his humor and his wit were still there. It was also stated that Lane was obviously high when he arrived to the studio. But Lane wasn't totally out of it. There was a Sony PlayStation in the studio lounge and Lane was giving tips for how to get ahead in certain games. The Offspring's drummer had a small electronic drum kit set up which Staley was very interested in. Most of all, he was interested in how you could program cartoon effects in for the different pads. Staley was saying, this is great, I want to get one of these, where did these come from? The other members of Alice in Chains and their crew were watching this, glad to see Lane happy and having fun. Shortly after, they brought out the cake and sang happy birthday and gave him a birthday card that they had all signed. A picture was taken of Lane on the drum set as he was about to blow out the candles. 
However, by about 5 o'clock in the morning, there was a confrontation of sorts. It was stated that the band would come back up and finish on Sunday. However, at this point, Lane said that he had to go back to Seattle to attend his sister's wedding. But this is where Jerry Cantrell yelled at Lane, as he just wasn't going to be putting up with any more of this sort of behavior from him. After Jerry had yelled at Lane for not wanting to come back and do the work the next day on the songs, Lane acted like he was afraid, terrified of Jerry. He just sat there and froze up. He didn't say another thing that night. But the thing about Lane having to go to his sister's wedding? Well, by all accounts, his sister was actually married a few months prior already. And it isn't 100% official, but it has been stated that Lane didn't even attend her wedding. But his sister was already married by that point, so it is assumed that Lane was just wanting to get high. That's a sad thing. But at any rate, the recording was not completed that night in L.A., and instead the recording and production was finished in Seattle with longtime Alice in Chains producer Toby Wright. As a result, Get Born Again has production credits for both Jordan and Wright. In the liner notes for Music Bank, Cantrell had this to say. We tried to work with Dave Jordan again and that didn't work out for various uncomfortable reasons. We had tracked with him in LA and then went up to Seattle with Toby Wright. So considering it was done in different states with different producers, I think it turned out pretty classic Alice. As Toby Wright was finishing off the project, he stated, At that point, Jerry and Lane weren't getting along at all, so I had one guy in, and I would have another guy in after he was done. Those two songs required a lot of Pro Tools editing. That was one of the first times Alice was ever on Pro Tools, because Lane would do something, he'd go home, Jerry would come in, I'd change it for him, he'd go home. Lane would come in and hear what we did, and he'd change it again, so it was a lot of digital manipulation. Producer Toby Wright added, It was easy for me because Lane and I got along really well, so I didn't have any problem with him at all. It was just a matter of getting him into the studio, having him sit down, and get creative. A music video was made for Get Born Again. The footage of Cantrell, Staley, and drummer Sean Kinney was pulled from the Sea of Sorrow video, while the footage of bassist Mike Inez was taken from the video, What the Hell Have I? So that is one trippy music video. You will know if you've checked that one out. And that is one awesome Alice in Chains song, Get Born Again. One of my favorite tracks from them, actually. One of the very last songs they ever did, but that's a really awesome song. And the other track that Alice in Chains did at that time, and this would be the final ever song that Staley would record with Alice in Chains, and that was that track, Died. As mentioned before, it is about Staley's former fiance who passed away in late 1996. And just like the song, Get Born Again, it has a mixed production credit of Jordan and Wright, and it was recorded under the same circumstances. In the liner notes for Music Bank, Cantrell said of the song, Died, I wish we'd have got a bit more work on that one. It's more Alice in a jam room. It's vicious. It's got teeth. It doesn't have many overdubs and maybe a pure, raw form of what Alice is. It isn't pretty, and that's not a bad thing at all. For me, that song died is pretty awesome. Maybe they wanted to finish it up and do some more work on it or whatever, but it's a really cool song. It's got a really awesome riff, and it definitely sounds good. Uh, any chance of you guys getting back together and doing any, any brand new material besides the two that are going to be on the box set? We'll let you know. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> oh, boy. <laughs> Jerry jumps right in there. We'll let you know. Yeah. Elena, what's your attitude toward that? Are you ready to record uh, again? Sure. I'd do it any time. Yeah? Yeah. All right. Well, there's the official word. There is no doubt Alice in Chains had the potential to release another really awesome sounding studio album. Of course, at that point, the final studio album that they did was the 95 one, The Tripod, with the dog on the cover, and that was such an awesome sounding album. And even though Lane said there in that Rockline interview in 99 that he would be happy to do another album with Alice in Chains, it was looking pretty clear, really, I think, that Chains were pretty much done by that stage, especially with everything that was going on with Lane. I mean... 
Lane clearly had a ton of problems going on. Unfortunately, at that time, him and Jerry weren't getting on the greatest, so the whole thing just wasn't working out that great. But both these songs are totally kick-ass, Get Born Again and Died. They're both really cool tracks. As I say, I put Get Born Again right up there with some of their very best stuff. It really is. I'm not just saying that. And with Lane far from his best and his health not the greatest during the recording of these two songs, he really pulled off an awesome performance. The final versions of these two songs, Lane sounds great on them. Damn good job. It just kind of seemed that Alice in Chains had fallen so far from such an awesome start just eight years prior with their debut album Facelift and then Dirt. And just a few years later, they were done. But they did put out a whole ton of material, which is awesome. There's a whole ton of stuff of Alice in Chains with Lane out there, so that's great. They did a whole bunch of stuff. The three studio albums, the two acoustic EPs with Sap and Jar of Flies, the unplugged performance, so there's six records right there if you want to go and look at it that way. Six high quality releases from the band. But it seems as though some of the struggles that Lane was already going through in his life at the time were only compounded when his former fiance, as we mentioned before, Demri, she passed away in October of 96. She was only 27 years old. And apparently after that, Lane was just really a broken man by all reports. A great shame and a great tragedy because that guy had a lot of talent, a lot of real talent. That guy could really sing. An awesome singer and songwriter to boot. So thanks guys for tuning into the video. Some people out there may have thought that the final thing that Lane did with Alice in Chains was the unplugged deal. But no, he actually went on to record two final songs with the band in 1998. And that was Get Born Again and Died. They're really cool songs. Definitely recommend checking them out. They're here on YouTube, of course, and they're on Alice in Chains' 1999 release, Music Bank. Two cool tracks. Check them out, guys, and we'll catch you next time.